how much of your history do you really know? And if I told you that much of it has been banned, erased, or hidden, would you still make excuses to learn it? The truth is we can't wait for permission to know our story. In this week's episode, we take a deep dive into the importance of the responsibility of knowing our history, because if we don't, who will? From banned books to forgotten legacies, it's time to break the cycle and uncover the powerful stories of our past. Let's stop making excuses and let's reclaim what's ours. What's going on, y'all, man? Welcome or welcome back to the Broken Traditions Podcast with your host, LaRon, aka Real Rap Ron. On this week's episode, we're going to have a conversation about the importance of knowing our history and learning our history and steps that we could take to learn our history. Because I feel like this. Learning Black history isn't just about the past. It's about shaping the future for our children in our community. So I believe that we need to start taking steps to learn the Black history. We're going to discuss that a little bit later. But let me tell you the story time or how I came to this conclusion. So a few... I said a few years back, right? Um, when I first started making content, I was on uh, Two Girls Shooting Ship episode. This is way back, right? Before I had my studio, you know, say I was in my apartment making videos in my living room. So this is that far back. And this started back when I was a guest on Two Girls Shooting the Ship with Emily and Mo, right? Uh, Emily and Mo, friends of the channel, and also friends of their channel and their platform. Usually when they go live, if I'm available, I'll hop on, you know what I'm saying? And side note, if you guys would like to see Broken Traditions on a platform, on your platform, just email me, Laron at brokentraditions.com. Um, if it's a good fit, if it's a good conversation, I'll come on. You know what I'm saying? I'm not one of those people who's saying that, you know, you got to have X amount of subscribers or this amount of views. Like, I'm about the view. I'm about the conversation. You know what I'm saying? I'm about the conversation because I feel if the conversation is right, the right people to hear it. So I'm not trying to go viral or nothing like that. And I've seen somebody in my comments saying that this is great content. You should go viral. And I say, you know, I like your um, your appreciation of the content, but it's not about going viral. It's about being impactful. So I'm a part of Two Girls Shooting the Shit podcast. And the conversation of banned books came up. And M... We're saying like, it's kind of messed up that they ban in books. They try to erase our history. And what I was saying, the contrast to what she was saying was, you know, they are banning books from the library, but it's still possible to get these books. It's possible to get the hands on our, on these books so we can learn this history and understand the past, right? So she's saying that, you know, they ban in books. There's no solution to it. There's no way out. We're not going to know our history. These books are getting... I don't know, um, thrown in the ocean and burnt up. And I'm like, no, these books that they're speaking of are just being banned in public libraries and probably school libraries and college libraries, right? And I was saying on the episode or on this live stream, you know, we are begging our oppressors to teach our history. Why can't we learn our own history and teach ourselves? You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm more advocating for. Why can't we learn our own history and teach ourselves instead of asking the uh, white boogeyman to teach us our history, because that doesn't make sense. If this is our oppressor, why do we have to beg them to teach our history? But that conversation sparked something in my head, like, you know what? We really do need to start learning our own history because clearly the banning of books is an issue, right? And, you know, sometimes we talked about banning the books. It could be books that being banned that was uh, books of, you know, strange sexual orientation type stuff that was pushing on to children. I get that. But they were banning books of black history and they also was taking this out the curriculum so i was like all right instead of begging them to do it let's do it ourselves come across meeting this brother named evan right evan is also a content creator the sexy nerd i met him at um west side cigars atl and the belt line shout out to the west side cigars atl shout out to ronnie and shout out to uh damon those are the owners of the spot and we outside smoking a cigar having a conversation so evan said Hey, have you ever heard of the book Rising from the Rails, the story of the Pullman Porters? He says a great book and, you know, gives a great history, a history of black American history that a lot of people don't know. I said, no, I haven't heard about it. So he said, have you heard about the warmth of other sons by Isabel Wilkinson? I said, no, I haven't heard about that either. So he recommended these two books for me to read. Right. So 
the rise, rising from the rails, from the Pullman, the story about the Pullman Porters used to be behind, uh, used to be behind me right here in my list of books that I like to have behind me. It's not there now. I'll explain later. So get the books, read the books, get this information about the books, reading stuff about history that I didn't know. And I'm just like, wow, this is amazing, right? This is amazing information that I'm getting about the Pullman Porters. Uh, so much, so much rich history that shaped Black America in ways that a lot of people don't even understand. The next, um, the warmth of mother sons is about the great migration from people moving from the south to the north. Now, the great migration I did not finish because of personal issues, and the book was like just too heavy for me to read. Like the context was too heavy for me to read what, what we had going on at the time. So. Didn't read, the, didn't read that book, but read the Pullman Porter book. And I was just like, okay, that's great information to hear from this brother so I could use whatever need I need to use it for, right? I use the story of the Pullman Porters in a video context of, of the Ben Carson, Thomas Soul, and Clarence Thomas sellout video that I did, right? I used the Pullman Porter situation in that, how I tied that together. So I was able to use that in real context. Um... Fast forward now, we meet Miss Henrietta, right? Miss Henrietta is an author. She wrote a book and we met her and she asked us to come to her house to check out the book and she gave us a copy of the book. So my wife and I go to her house and at her house, she has a whole bunch of different books, right? All the different books of history and everything like that. I'm just like, wow, she got this, she got that. No, she actually had the warmth of other sons by Isabella Wilkerson. So we discussed that a bit. Then she showed me this book over here, Ebony and Ivy, that you see over here, over my shoulder. And she gave me the book and she says, this book is about Ivy League schools such as Harvard, Brown, Princeton, Columbia, Yale have ties to slavery, right? And I discussed that in another video I did, that I did about voting for reparations is a dead end. And I spoke about how all the presidents have ties to Ivy League schools. If they don't have ties to Ivy League schools, they have ties to owning slaves. So either way, you know what I'm saying? I said it's a dead end. But she gave me this book and she said, do you see what's, do you see what's going on with this book? I'm like, it's a regular book, right? Like I looked at it, she said, now look at it. I see a due date. I see a library stamp on the top of the book. I see a barcode for the book, for like for the library. So I say to her, oh, this is a library book. So I'm thinking, oh, this book is a book that perhaps she took out from the library and just kept, right? I don't know. I thought that it, it showed that the book was in Texas, like it was a, a college in Texas. So I was like, all right, she just, you know, she took the book from the library and kept it. And she said, no, this was a banned book. So a book about a book about Ivy League schools contributing to slavery is a banned book. Now, the book is still available to purchase, but as far as it being in libraries, as far as it being in schools, it's banned. And I'm like, wow. So having that conversation with MMO sparked like, hey, we need to do something. You know what I'm saying? Let's not just lie down and say that they've been in our books. We can't do nothing. You know what I'm saying? That conversation from two girls from the ship, fast forward a conversation with Evan, the sexy nerd, saying, hey, check out these two books, getting that information, then meeting Miss Henrietta and her telling me about Ebony and Ivy. And the reason why I don't have um, <laughs> Rising from the Rails because she let me borrow that. I let her borrow the Rising from the Rails. So I got Ebony and Ivy from her and I let her borrow Rising from the Rails because she didn't know about that story. So now... Between me and her, we swapping stories like, hey, read this, you read that. She gave me a recommendation for another book, and I gave her a recommendation for another book, which I'm going to discuss in a bit. So that information from we got to figure something out to this brother telling me these, these things to now Miss Henrietta is telling me something. And I asked her, how did you find out about Ebony and Ivy? She said from a book club. I was like, oh, OK, that's. That makes sense, right? A book club, recommend books, and people buy the books and read the books and get the information for the books. And after that, you know, they discuss the information. So I said, you know what? It's time for us to have a book club. 
it's time for the Broken Traditions Book Club. I've been putting it out there a little bit, right? I talked about it on a short video, but now it's official. We have the Broken Traditions Book Club. The Broken Traditions Book Club is going to start November 1st, right? It's going to start November 1st, right? I'm taking the, I'm taking the initiative to start the Broken, Broken Traditions Book Club. Uh, there's going to be a link in the bio for a form. Oh, once you fill that form out, you sign up for the book club. There is no cost to it. You know what I'm saying? You have to be responsible for purchasing your own books or ebooks or audiobooks. We'll talk about that later. And right now, every two weeks, we'll meet up and have a discussion about the information we gather on the book that was chosen, right? First, I'm going to choose the first book. Then after that, we have like group discussions and group information of what book to choose next so we can learn about that. And the Broken Tradition Book Club is ready E for everybody. It doesn't matter your race, your gender, your ideology, your political stance or whatever. As long as you want to learn about American history, that which is Black history. Now, every time we make an excuse not to learn, we let another piece of Black culture be erased. That has to stop. First book that I want to have us read is a book that I've seen. I've seen the cover of the book. It blew my mind because I didn't know about this, right? Shout out to Rogan, this bohemian gal. I was a guest on her show, and I was telling her about the book club, and I told her that this is the first book that we're going to read. And I told her about it. She had no idea that this was a thing. Um, I talked to somebody on the side note about the book club, like, hey, I know you into, you know, audible books. We're doing this book club. You want to join? I told him and his girl about it. They had no idea this is a thing. A lot of people don't have no idea that this is a thing. The first book I want to read is called American Sirens, right? So let me um, show you the cover. American Sirens, written by Kevin Hazard, right? Here we go right here. So American Sirens, the incredible story of the black man who became America's first paramedics. Usually we get hype of the first black such as such, right? The first black person to, um, you know, playing the NBA, the first black person to do the, I don't know, the, the, the Cupid shuffle, I don't know, right? The first black person to do something we always get hyped of. This book is speaking about the incredible story of the black man who became the, America's first paramedics. Not the first black ones. These are the first people who happen to be black. Before we continue with the content, man, make sure you guys hit the like button and follow Broken Traditions wherever you find this content at. Also, I want to give a special shout out to the Broken Tradition channel members, the, the Tradition Breakers. We got some new people who join the Tradition Breakers. Uh, appreciate you guys for joining, helping me out, helping keep the lights on for Broken Traditions. We're going to have an exclusive uh, podcast recording, right? So what we do here is we have online podcast recordings when I have special guests on. So you guys get to see the behind the scenes and see, you know, we have these great conversations with other content creators and you guys also have input in the comments. That's for channel members only. So if you guys want to join the Tradition Breakers, hit the link in the show notes. And after that, you could become a channel member and get the exclusive content when we have other people come on. All right, let's continue on with this episode. A lot of people don't know this, right? We, When it comes to black culture, we know a lot of things, right? We know how to... uh do swag surfing, right? <laughs> we know how to uh, do the Cupid shuffle and the electric slide and play spades. You know what I mean? We know how to make um, Thug Passion and uh, the Incredible Hulk. We know the day Biggie died. How come nobody know about this? The incredible story of the black man who became America's first paramedics. That is not common knowledge. Let me know in the comments if you knew that that was a thing, that the first paramedics in this country were black men, not the first black men who were paramedics. The first men who were paramedics happened to be black. That's heavy. That's why I want to read that book. That's why I'm like, wow, when I seen that book, I had to pick it up and buy it. Had to buy it. Our ancestors overcame the impossible. What's your excuse for not knowing their stories? Join the Broken Traditions Book Club. It's free. Um, you know, this is a, a way of learning our history, not making excuses, having impactful conversations. Um, like I said, this is rated E for everyone. As long as you want to come in and learn history, 
discuss history, learn about our history, come on in. Like I said, this right here is about the first black paramedics. If you're a paramedic that want to learn the history of the first black paramedics, come join. Come join. If you know somebody who's a paramedic that may want to learn history, come join. You know what I'm saying? And I'll be real. The Broken Traditions Book Club is not strictly books. You have to buy a physical copy of books. You could buy ebooks. You could buy audibles. You know what I'm saying? Whatever works for you to consume the information. We're not here to try to get everybody to buy physical books. Some people like books on their iPads. Some people like books on their iPhone, their Android, their Samsung tablet. Some people like Audibles. Whatever works. Whatever works for you, let's do it. Let's get this information. Let's consume this information. Let's stop making excuses. Banning books won't stop us from learning our history. It's time we stop making excuses and take control. We have to take control. We have to take control. Can't keep saying, oh, they banning books. I seen them post, oh, they destroying books from this library. Still could go on Amazon. Still go to a bookstore. We can still go to Yaya Books. Shout out to Alyssa from Yaya Books, who also signed up to the book club. We're so ill about it, Alyssa signed up for the book club. She put a recommendation into the book club, into the comments. Personal librarian. A book that I haven't heard about, a story I haven't heard about, is about Belle the Costa Green. The black woman responsible for building the J.P. Morgan Library. So, just for me saying I'm doing a book club, she found me on YouTube saying, I put up there, hey, the Broken Traditions Book Club. She signed up for it. Signed up for it. Gave me a recommendation for a book. A book that I didn't know about. So now, she's putting on, she's putting me on the game about history. And she has a bookstore. So, the book that I'm recommending you could buy it from her, buy it from my affiliated link. You know, of course, I'm going to put affiliate links in my, my description, but it's about getting the information. It's about getting the information of these books. You know what I'm saying? And so dope that somebody who owns an online bookstore is now part of the book club. This is dope. This is, this is going to be dope. And I think that if you guys are looking to break away from toxic traditions, this is a way to start. You know what I'm saying? If we don't take responsibility for learning our history, black culture will continue to be defined by those who erase it. It's that simple. They could ban books and tell you to follow a sexy red, follow a, a little RT, follow a, a, a 21 Savage or what have you. They could prop these people in front of you and tell you these people are black culture. But then I say, let's read American Sirens this is real black excellence, real black excellence. So like I said, ready E for everybody. If you are a paramedic and you want to know the history of how paramedics started in this country, you could be black, Puerto Rican, or Haitian. I forgot what Fife Dog said. My bad, Fife Dog, rest in peace. I like them brown, yellow, Puerto Rican, or Haitian. But you could be whatever you want to be under the sun. It doesn't matter. It's about the information. It's about knowing this rich information that's American history that which happened to be black. This is a, this, this right here. I'm excited about the, reading this book. I'm excited about reading this book. I didn't start yet. Um, I'm reading another book right now, but this is going to be the first book of the book club. We're going to start the book club November 1st. American Sirens. There's going to be a link in the uh, description for you guys to purchase a book. You purchase a book. It is an affiliated link and the kickback do does go back to broken traditions, but it's no additional cost. So if you don't click the link, you're going to pay the same price. But if you want to support, you can click the link and pay the same price and support broken traditions. You know what I'm saying? It's about the information, but why not click the link, right? Our ancestors overcame the impossible. What's our excuse for not knowing their stories? What's the excuse? I've been reading stories about like Booker T. Washington and, you know, Frederick Douglass and all these great folks that overcame so much. All these great people overcame so much. All these great men, women who overcame so much. And we don't know it. And our excuses, oh, they're not teaching it in schools. I mean, when I was in public schools, I didn't learn about Italian American history. I didn't learn about Chinese American history. I didn't learn about no other culture American history. But their history is still embedded into their culture. They still have pride in what they went through and who they are. 
Not to say we don't have pride, but we don't have knowledge of it. We don't even know about it. There's a lot of things we don't know. And it's time to change that. Let's change. Let's work together. Now, I'll put the link in the show notes so you guys can say, all right, let's click this link. Let's fill out this form. Let's become a part of the book club. No more excuses. We don't need no more excuses. This is great. This is a great step. I'm excited about it. There's no cost to join. There's no obligation to join. We're going to do all the, we're going to do this online. It's going to be, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. And like I said, shout out to Alyssa for putting me onto a book. Put me onto a book. That's perhaps another, another suggestion that we should use within the book club. Uh, another book that was suggested, I think it was suggested by Mike, if I'm not mistaken. I got to look into the, into the information because people have been signing up. The Color of Laws. Another book suggested for us to learn our history. I think this is great, man. Our history is waiting for us to uncover it. Let's join the Broken Traditions Book Club. Let's get it. Let's get this, this information. Before we close, man, um, I got two things I want to say. Uh, I want to give my condolences to Severe, uh, Smoke and Talk, podcast smoke and talk llc uh seen on your community tag that your brother passed away that's heavy man i my heart goes out to you i'm so sorry for your loss my heart definitely goes out to you i'm you know watching you guys create content usually check in on the the lunchtime show you know what i'm saying I had some time like oh, okay smoke and talk is on see what they talking about you know, to hear that, that your brother passed away, man, that's, that's heavy. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we are, you know, you know, at times we are this YouTube community. We not, we might not have met each other in real life. We may have been on panels or something like that with each other, but we still have respect for each other and have love for each other on these uh, YouTube streets, as they call it. And so my heart goes out to you. My heart goes out to your family. My condolences to you and yours. And uh, last but not least, my shirt that I'm wearing, right? Uh, usually I have on a Broken Traditions merch, but today I have on a shirt that says Canton, North Carolina, right? People are like, where's Canton, North Carolina? Canton, North Carolina is north of Asheville. Um, got hit by that Hurricane Helene. You know, I was just there at the end of August. So I was there maybe a month before it happened. Um, it's so crazy because we went there for my wife's birthday and... I was telling her if she was born a month later, we probably would have drove up there not thinking that a hurricane is going to hit the mountains. Not thinking that, you know, we never thought something like that. So to be at this beautiful town that have such beautiful views, uh, great people to see what they're going through is heartbreaking. And I know a lot of people are speaking about Asheville, like, oh, Asheville, North Carolina. But there's so many other little smaller towns out there that's going through this without the resources that's, you know, maybe an hour away from the main city that a lot of people just live there for generations. Now that their house is probably flooded or broken apart or torn away, don't have the resources to rebuild. You know what I'm saying? This is middle America. This is, you know, just great people out there. Seeing places that we were just at a month ago now underwater is so surreal it's so surreal and my heart definitely goes out to those people man and the government please stop playing with the money i've seen some things that may be disgusted please stop playing with the money help these people out help these people out it's not about the election it's not about getting trump in or getting harrison it's about helping these people you know what i'm saying these are good people going up there meeting these folks it's, it's messed up, man. It's definitely messed up, but very friendly out there. And to see that this is what they're going through is so heartbreaking. It's definitely so heartbreaking. So I was like, you know what? Just to show my love and support, I'm wearing a Canton, North Carolina shirt. And when I bought the shirt, my wife was like, why are you buying a Canton, North Carolina shirt? I didn't know why I was buying it, right? I just thought it looked cool and say, hey, I've been to Canton. Somebody asked me, then I have a whole story about being in the mountains. So that's why I bought the shirt. I like, I think the shirt looked nice and I bought it from the store. But it was just crazy seeing the floods going out there and like, whoa, that's the story we wanted to get, you know, a bottle of liquor real quick. Whoa, that's the story we wanted to get some chips 
oh we went there oh we went there wait a minute that book did everything that we went to is destroyed that we've seen i'm just like we were literally right there you sometimes have to count your blessings and understand what's going on man but yeah i just want to close off on that man i appreciate y'all like i said i put the information in the show notes for the broken traditions book club so you guys could join we can learn our history if we don't take responsibility for learning our history black culture will continue to be defined by those who want to erase it appreciate y'all all right man till next time peace real rap ron is signing off all right later one